Hey there, fellow English literature students, welcome to my YouTube channel, where today we are diving into some exciting tips to help us master the art of memorizing codes and answers. Whether you're preparing for an exam, writing a paper, or simply want to impress your friends with your literary knowledge, these techniques will make you a code memorizing superstar, so let's get started. Imagine this, you set a goal for yourself to memorize a certain number of codes and author's name. You create a plan, break it down into manageable chunks, and tackle them one by one. As you progress, ask yourself, how will help me become a better student? How will it feel when I confidently recite codes in class or when the professor asks for the name of a literary work by a specific author and I'm the first to respond? Picture it, that feeling of pride, satisfaction, and accomplishment. You'll experience a surge of pleasure and happiness as you witness the results of your hard work. By immersing yourself in these questions and envisioning the positive outcomes, you'll feel your motivation and determination to succeed. But wait, there is more. Take a moment to reflect on the consequences of your dedicated studying. When you set targets and actively work towards them, you'll notice a transformation in your understanding of literature. You'll become more confident, knowledgeable, and most importantly, you'll be able to contribute meaningfully to class discussions. Imagine the scene. Your professor asks for the name of literary work and you confidently raise your hand knowing that you have the answers. Your classmates look at you with admiration and respect. It's a moment of triumph and it's all started with the simple act of setting goals for yourself. So, my fellow literature aficionados, immerse yourself in the power of questions and thrill for goal setting. Set your targets, break them down and conquer them one by one. Embrace the joy of mastering codes and author's name and bask in the rewards of your dedication. Don't try to learn very difficult codes that requires reading of at least two articles to understand. However, sometimes it happens. As an English literature student, we are no stranger to long and complex codes. That's where acronym come to rescue. Take the first letter of each word in the code or author's name and create a catchy acronym. Trust me, it'll stick in your mind like a literary earworm. For example, for William Shakespeare's famous code, to be or not to be, that is the question, we can form the acronym. It is a simple yet effective way to remember those thought-provoking lines. Let go of restrictive beliefs and unlock your potential. If professors and others can effortlessly remember sentences and names, so can you. Clear your mind, focus all your attention on reading, and start reading as if you are learning the most important subject of your life. Emotions and excitement are important, but reading is not beneficial when you are uninterested. To retain codes, you need to be in a good mood. If you find yourself feeling bored or disengaged, the information may not be encoded as strongly. To counter this, try playing music that brings you joy. Engaging in exercise or meditation and writing down your anxious thoughts. Remember, the solutions may vary for each individual, so find what works best for you. It's important to elevate your emotions and create a positive mindset for optimal learning. As English literature enthusiasts, we have vivid imaginations, so let's put them to use. Visualize the quote or author's name as a captivating mental image. Picture scenes or characters that embody the essence of the quote. Let your imagination run wild. For Jane Austen's quote, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in position of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Imagine a bustling Regency era ballroom with eligible bachelors vying for attention. Immerse yourself in the world of the code and it'll stick with you like a memorable movie scene. Let's talk about your study spot. Picture this. You're lying on your cozy bed attempting to memorize those elusive codes and author's name. But hold on a second. 
that's not the way to go. Your bed is a temptation vortex that lures you into the realm of relaxation and daydreaming. We need to create a dedicated study zone that sparks your focus and ignites your intellectual fire. Now I'm not talking about creating an ideal, picture-perfect environment. Let's face it, life isn't always like a movie montage. But we can make a simple yet effective changes that optimize your surrounding for better concentration and memory retention. One powerful technique is to put your phone on airplane mode or shut it down entirely. Yes, I said it. We all know how tempting those social media notifications can be. By eliminating distractions, you are giving your brain the space to fully immerse itself in the world of literature. But that's not all. Have you ever heard of saying out of sight, out of mind? It's time to apply that to your study area. Clear your away any unnecessary clutter or distractions that might steal your attention. Create a clean and organized space that promotes clarity and focus. Now let's talk about lighting. Natural light is your best friend. Position your study area near a window, allowing the sunlight to pour in and energize your mind. If that's not possible, opt for a well-lit room with bright, warm lighting that keeps you alert and engaged. And here's a pro tip for you, background notes. Some people thrive in complete silence, while others find the gentle hum of ambient noise helpful. Experiment with different options and find what works best for you. You can try soft instrumental music, ambient sounds or even white noise. Just make sure it's not too distracting, as we want to strike that balance between focus and relaxation. So my fellow study enthusiasts, it's time to optimize your environment and unlock your potential. Say goodbye to bad distractions and hello to a dedicated study zone. Remember, it's all about creating an environment that supports your goals and fuel your passion for learning. As lovers of language, we know the power of rhythm and rhyme. Transform the quote or author's name into a poetic masterpiece. Play with sounds, create rhythmic pattern, or even turn it into a rap if you're feeling adventurous. Let your inner poet shine. For instance, for Albert Einstein's quote, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. We can transform it into a catchy rhyme like, when things get tough, opportunity is enough. Feel the beat and watch those codes grow into your memory. As English literature students, we are natural storytellers. So let's bring that talent to our memorization game. Turn the code or author's name into a mini story or narrative. Create a brief fictional scenario that incorporates the code, making it for easy to remember. For a Steve Jobs code, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Imagine a dedicated inventor in a workshop passionately crafting his masterpiece. Let the story unfold in your mind and watch the code become an unforgettable part of your literary reporter. Engage your emotions, connect the information to places or scenes you already know and watch as the magic happens. It could be a memorable vacation spot, a beloved childhood home or serene adventure. By forming emotional associations, you increase the likelihood of remembering those facts. Well, if you enjoyed watching the video so far, go ahead and hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep me motivated. Thank you. Now let's dive into the continuation. Our minds are great at forming connections. Take advantage of that. Identify keywords using the code and associate them with related or similar words. This technique helps create mental links that aid in recall. For William Shakespeare's quote, all that glitters is not gold, associate glitters with shiny and gold with valuable. Let those associations spark in your mind and illuminate your memory. Learn those codes as if you are preparing to teach them to others. When you approach the material with the intention of teaching, you engage with it on a deeper level. 
break down the codes, analyze their meaning, and understand the context in which they were written. By doing so, you'll not only memorize them more effectively, but only also gain a comprehensive understanding of the literature itself. But here's where the magic happens. Quiz yourself. After a focused study session, take a brain break to recharge. Then come back and test your knowledge through quizzes. Create flashcards. Use online platforms or even challenge a study buddy to a friendly competition. By quizzing yourself, reinforce that you've learned. Identify areas that need important and solidify your memory. And guess what? The learning doesn't stop there. When you begin your next study session, kick a start it with another round of quizzes. This technique, known as spaced repetition, leverages the power of regular review to enhance long-term retention. By revisiting the material through quizzes, you reinforce your memory and ensure that the information stays with you for a long haul. And remember, as English literature student, reading extensively is our superpower. The more we read, the more codes, authors, and literary words we encounter. It deepens our understanding for wider context and helps us appreciate the richness of literature. So, my full English literature student, let's unleash our inner code memorizer. Experience with these techniques. Find what works best for you and conquer those codes with confidence. If you found these tips helpful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more literary context and share it with your fellow bookworms. Thank you for joining me and let's rock those codes like the literary genius we are. Bye!